Wish you could see me. I'm making notes. This is true here in the, all the years I've been your pastor. And I've tried not to be a distraction with it. And when I go do services elsewhere and uh, whatever, I am working and changing and writing notes on my message up until the moment I come up. And I don't know when a sermon is really finished, Taylor, but at some point the clock just says it's ready. You go jump up. Wasn't that beautiful, y'all, singing? I knew we'd be off today. We, I don't know if you heard. Just, I've heard scores of people who have a COVID concerns in their extended family. And so with all the cases going on, I just kind of suspect that we'd be a little bit more hunkered down maybe this week and maybe even the next week. Be praying for folks. There's a lot of folks out there that have concerns out there in their extended family that I know, not only in our church family, but even outside our church family. I hope you're staying safe this morning. Let me, how about the parking lot? How's it looking? Doesn't that look a lot better, y'all? We got everything kind of really finalized on knowing what the striping was going to be Wednesday, Mitch, and make sure it met what the uh, inspector wanted on that one or two places. Then I went back out here Friday. The guys assured me they would finish up Friday. Uh, then Saturday got all the stuff up. And to me, it makes the parking lot pop. And uh, so it'd be neat to me. We got some pressure washing. I kind of shared this with the uh, chairman of the board and vice chairman, you know, trying for us to try to decide what things we want to try to do ourselves and what things we'll do kind of with our maintenance uh, volunteers. But if we get everything kind of pressure washed and looking clean across the facility, I think it'll really be popping and looking good here. So it'll be a good thing to get done. We think we only know one more thing that's needed to pass final inspection in our building. And that's based on me meeting with our contractor last Wednesday and him kind of telling me this one thing. I passed it on to Mitch. I forgot to pass it on to the whole committee. And uh, so he's hoping to get that inspection done this week. And so I would just say, based on one of those things being a question mark, that one, one of the things in that thing doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? But just, uh, we'll see, won't we, Mitch? We'll see, we'll see. Jeff thinks it's worth a, worth a try. And so for me, that makes it worth a trial. And I'll have, I'm assuming you've heard, we've had some folks really... Have some things happen this weekend. Certainly Lauren's dad, the accident that happened to him and the big surgery, major surgery that he had yesterday. You want to be praying for, for Lauren's dad. And uh, Carol Hedden, she's been in a great deal of pain since she got home. The plan is for her to call ortho, excuse me. The plan right now is that Coliseum Northside is going to call Dr. Robinson's office, Ortho Georgia, tomorrow and try to get an appointment set up for her to follow up with one of the surgeons and go ahead and get her surgery scheduled. So when I talked to Ronnie this morning, that would be a good way for us to pray, that they would go ahead and get that worked out because they know the surgery uh, needs to hip happen. And Jimmy has been, Jimmy Tibble has been real sick up at the hospital, y'all. And uh, blessed that when I called him, he was able to communicate, having a more coherent day. But uh, just be praying. They've done some scans and some tests. And I may mention this later in the message again. John Stokes, you remember us praying for John Stokes, John and Betty Stokes? John, uh, they were just doing a lot of chemo on John. And then they had to cancel the chemo because of some of stuff going on with bronchitis, then a touch of pneumonia, then a good case of pneumonia. Well, they just got him back in for a PET scan. He needed more chemo treatments. But here's what he found out Friday at the cancer center across from the Coliseum. He is cancer free. So they just immediately, I went back and forth with him. They knew he was going. So they, they both, his sister texted me. Mom called me to let me know. And you know how they get to ring the bell when they're done with chemo? Well, because they thought he had two more chemo, he asked, can I go to the other side over there and ring the bell? And uh, so I think that's neat. A praise. And so in the midst of a lot of stuff going on, there is some good going on. All right, let's stand. Let's stand. And if you can come, if you can help us get some stuff down, and if you can come back at 1.30 to help decorate, the good news is we got people who know where things need to be. They just, we could use some helping hands. And so come back 1.30 if it fits your day to be able to do so. Turn, oh, turn. Psalm 107. Sorry. Psalm 107 brought five points with me to the pulpit this morning, this is the first verse of Psalm 107 in the New King James. It fits the wonderful songs that Andrea has led us to sing this morning. The psalmist said, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Father, I pray you'd help me to convey what you've laid on my heart for this pastor's heart afresh this morning and for those here. Remind you of those that we've been asked to pray for with COVID concerns in their family. 
and even especially those that have COVID and are in the throes of it right now. Pray your blessing on our day, those that we've called out also by name this morning, be with them and the caregivers. And Father, again, it's your help that's needed here, your help for this moment in the service, and I ask for your help in Christ's name. And all God's people said, you may be seated, church. First point is this. When we give gratitude, when we're thankful to the Lord, it honors God. Gratitude honors God. Matter of fact, it honors God anytime we give thanks. And you know what? Can I say this? It honors other people when we show gratitude for them, too. It shows esteem for them. I'll talk about that again in just a moment. I jotted down some things. See if my list is a little bit like your list this morning. I thank you for the wisdom you give. I thank you that you know everything that I need before I even know I need it. I thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. I thank you for your help, for your peace, for the confirmation talks that you send my way. For the phone calls and the texts that come from seemingly nowhere. That confirm some prayers I'm having with you. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my health. I thank you for bringing me through COVID. I thank you for my family's health. I thank you for protecting me and my family with another year driving. And I can go on and on and on and on. It honors God when we recognize him. Lynn, I appreciate the sweet card that you and Louise, Louise, that you and Lynn sent last week. Here's the update on Toby that you asked about. He's, his, his leg is still tender. It's still sore to touch. It's actually now kind of a new thing that's happened since he had the procedure a few weeks ago. So Lauren's actually just going to make contact with the specialist at the Haas Children's Hospital in Columbus just to be sure that this is kind of what they should have expected at this moment. But otherwise, he's running around like crazy. You really got to be touching it and messing with it for you to know anything. And so they're still hopeful and still believing that God's on the throne. And they're thankful that God has sent the right people to be there helping with Toby. It honors God when we show gratitude. You've heard me say how much I like Corey Ten Boom. It's been neat to see. Uh, Carly is one of our young people that I know. Post some beautiful quotes from Corey on her Facebook page on occasion. Listen to this because this fits even when things are not great. She's referring to back when her sister and her Betsy were in the Nazi prison camp. And she's mulling this over and thinking about this event in light of Betsy dying while they were there. She said, Betsy, who was a giant in my life, would often hear people say how good God is. We prayed that it would not rain at our church picnic, and we look at the lovely weather. Yes, God, is, Betsy went on, yes, God is good when he sends good weather when we want it and need it. But God, Corey goes on to say, but God was also good when he allowed my sister Betsy to starve to death before my eyes in a German concentration camp. I remember one occasion when I was very discouraged there. Everything around us was dark. And Corey says, there was darkness in my own heart. I remember telling Betsy that I think God has forgotten us. And Corey says that Betsy says to her, no, Corey, he has not forgotten us. Remember his word. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. Corey concludes, there's an ocean of God's love available. There is plenty for everyone. May God grant us the ability, she says, to never doubt that victorious love, whatever the circumstances. It honors God in the midst of challenging circumstances. When in the quietness of our heart, we thank him for all that we know is good that he has sent our way. There's a lot that could be said there. I really feel for purpose of the message, that's enough. It honors God.
for us to show gratitude. And we certainly want to honor and give glory to our God. And these are the four that I thought were more practical that I wanted to share with you this morning. Gratitude creates fellowship. I've watched this in my own life over the years. This proved true. And I wonder why I'm so gravi- I so feel gravitated to that person or those people. Gratitude always builds deeper relationships between us and other people. Always. You want to rebuild a relationship with somebody key in your life? You want to begin the building process? It can be a loved one, a spouse, a friend, a parent, family, people at church, co-workers, people you serve with in community functions, places. Show gratitude to them. Thank them for what they mean to you. In the midst of whatever challenge you could be going through with them or perceived challenge, thank them. Show gratitude. It just, it just is a kinship that comes from it. Everybody. Matter of fact, I'll share, let, me save that. let me save that for later. Whoever you want to have a better relationship with, start purposely making yourself available to spend time with them and express gratitude to them. During the next week, practically, I want to challenge you to do something. Text them. Email them. Maybe, maybe the need is more personal. Call them. Write them. There's something about a handwritten note that just kind of seems more touching than when we send texts and emails because we recognize somebody went to extra effort to do that. Added a stamp to it. Express the gratitude that you feel. It, it creates fellowship. I wish I could let you listen to a voicemail I got from the Mayos that I alluded to about three weeks ago, thanking us. At the end of our fiscal year at the church, September 30th is our fiscal year. We, we send an extra gift of whatever's left in, the, in, the, in our mission accounts. We divvy it up among our four missionaries that are foreign missionaries, and we send them a lump sum at the end of the year. Two of the four I've received, actually three of the four, received just a beautiful thank yous. This happens every year. But without fail, and one of them, Jonathan Mayo just chose to do a voicemail. Just a lengthy two, three, four-minute voicemail. Describing what's happened in Uganda and how much this extra gift is going to help us to meet the need. There's something about just being thankful to each other for what we've done or not done or should do for each other. The other one is the moons, Don Moon. Brian, I forgot. It seems like it must be most Fridays or at least regularly. Brian and my son-in-law are in conference call with Don. They've got a, a little bit of business venture going on that they're helping with concerning the missionaries, but regular contact. And Don referred to that in his lengthy email that he sent me, thanking us for all the years. These are two missionaries that we're close to 30 years supporting here at our local church. I, mean, I, think I feel confident with Don, a number of folks have been supporting for 30 years. But there's something, not just about the support and hearing about the work, about the gratitude. That flows back and forth. When people say thank you and we say thank you, there's just a bond that comes there. It helps us to forget whatever little thing may may be going on now or has gone on in the past. It builds fellowship. I got a contact from a preacher this week, preaching, blessed to do the service on behalf of Mildred Wyndham and Brenda Mitchell and Miss Pat's two children, Sean and Sherry. Graveside service Monday for Miss Pat. Ran into a preacher working there with uh, that I've done revivals for and just somebody I've got acquainted with over the years. See very rarely. We interact. It's sweet. It's, it's beautiful when you see people like this. Like your loved ones, people that maybe you attended church with years ago that you're still close with. Just brothers and sisters in Christ. We just hit it off, had a beautiful conversation. And then it was two days later, he sent me the most uh, meaningful text. We didn't chat about anything. Just the most meaningful text to say how much I had meant to him. It prompted me to send a number of emails and texts to people this week. Thinking just how much that contact meant when I received it Tuesday evening or Wednesday. It builds fellowship. It just binds us together. It helps us to remember how much we love each other, how much we value and respect each other in the body and in a family. So I want to encourage you. Gratitude honors God, and gratitude creates closeness and fellowship. The third thing, 
Gratitude strengthens faith. We can thank God when life seems to stink. Matter of fact, would it be fair to say that's the test of whether we're a shallow Christian or a deep one? How we navigate adversity and challenges. We can thank God when everything stinks, when everything seems to have gone and is going wrong. I feel for people, but I have also been monumentally blessed to watch people go through the hardest of circumstances, never waver in their walk with God, and never waver in doing what one wrote, pause, look, search, examine your life and see again how good God has been. And even in the midst of this, it's still being. There's a promise that comes from trusting God and showing gratitude to God through some of the most difficult chances in to life. It helps us. It strengthens us. It helps, it helps us to care for others, to sense that needed grace, that needed strength, that needed help, that needed joy, that needed peace. It's impossible to quantify. As a matter of fact, what my doctors say, doctors still say, ingratitude it is, uh, it is immensely unhealthy. People that, ex- that, that just in general express gratitude, live as thankful people, they have the healthiest of human emotions. The more grateful, doctors say, we are in life, the healthier we are physically, emotionally. So I want to encourage you to do what I purpose. I'm 37 years full-time in ministry. It's been this year that I have purposely, intentionally said in the beginning of my prayers, I want to spend way more time expressing gratitude than I've ever done in my life. It has transformed my prayer life. Should have started this way sooner. I encourage you to do so. I was late, always incorporated thankfulness, always expressed it, but here, purposefully, to, before any list of needs and concerns, God again, just initially, you know what this, what this does, what God does for us? He just keeps flooding our hearts with those things. And it keeps us in the midst of whatever has happened or is happening right now. We're just reminded constantly how good he is. I encourage you to do so. If you're an early morning prayer, it's a great way to start your day. It gets the day off to a healthy start. Now, they, we could all name things, things we're thankful for this morning. You know what the biggest thing I'm, one of the biggest I'm thankful for this morning? That even though the election appears to be going in a direction that I would have preferred a different outcome because of the potential Supreme Court justices, I'm thankful for the Supreme Court decision this past week, late Wednesday night. 5-4 decision. First time during the pandemic that the Supreme Court has held up the sacredness, the wellspring that comes from worship, and how fundamental the First Amendment is to our worship. Notice this. I purposely thought this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is a decision worth thanking God for. Because it, 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 when this happens, it strengthens your faith. It's one of these things that strengthens our faith when we focus on those things. Helps us get, we've been through other hard times, helps us get through. And so I wanted to go read this opinion. Very seldom read these opinions. I'm not that bright. I wanted to read it. Listen, listen to a couple paragraphs that I brought with me to the pulpit. The five, including the new justice, Judge Barrett. Judge Roberts voted with the more liberal wing again this time, 5-4 decision. But Judge Barrett joined the others. To make this the law of the land. This this is what the court said. To show how reasoned they were. Members of this court are not public health experts. And we should respect the judgment of those with special expertise and responsibility in this area. I, I think that is an awesome statement for them to include. But even in a pandemic, the constant cannot be put away. And forgotten. The restrictions at issue here that affected the boroughs of New York City, Catholic dioceses, and Jewish synagogues, the restrictions at issue here by effectively barring many from attending religious services strike at the very heart of the First Amendment's guarantee of religious liberty. And understand, y'all, their restrictions were limiting the groups to 10. 
the issue that those folks had that filed the suit were the restrictions are worse on churches than the other folks in the public health sphere. And just saying, this is grossly out of bounds. I am thankful for this Supreme Court. I'm thankful for our mayor who I've only been in the presence of one time, sitting, sitting up here at River Edge at, the, at a ceremony for the grand opening. They had me do a prayer, and I happened to be sitting next to the mayor. Don't know him, but like many of you, I wrote him and wrote, wrote, the, wrote the commissioners about this issue. So, so when this decision was made to do the veto, I hope you did the same. And if you haven't, I encourage you to do so, because a few days late is still worthy. I sent him an equally link. Whatever length my email was, I sent something of similar length to thank him for his decision. I encourage us to do the same. It stri- <laughs> Part of what being thankful does, it just strengthens our faith. It reminds us, how God brought us through here. And even while I'm in the midst of this, he's, he's brought me through others. And he'll see me through this. When we hear about how faithful God has been to others, when we share our thanks and other people share their thanks, we're reminded that we serve a God who's still in the miracle business, who still moves on hearts, who in the midst of what we wish was different there is still moving over here. Fourth thing I brought to the pulpit with me is this. Now, let me pause here. That's why this, state of, this, this, this election in the state of Georgia for governor is, I mean, this decision that's pending on January 5th, for our two senators in the state of Georgia is huge. And I hope people won't be so discouraged about the outcome that they won't get out and vote. These are key matters that are before us. Fourth thing I brought to the pulpit with me is this. Gratitude serves others. Serves others. Radical gratitude, gratitude does this. If you've ever bought a car, if you've ever bought a new car, especially you know about depreciation. You know, when it goes off the lot, it's depreciated in value as soon as you left. It depreciates in time, unless it's a classic and has some special circumstances. Gratitude is the opposite of that. It's when we appreciate each other. Appreciate. Literally, appreciate means to raise in value. When you appreciate your husband, you raise his value. When you appreciate your wife, you raise her value. You appreciate your kids, you raise their value. When you appreciate your coworkers, you raise their value to you and to the company or the business. When you appreciate your boss, you raise his or her value. When you appreciate those who work for you, you appreciate their value. You know what I found most people? It's not unique to just men. Most of us have a need to be affirmed, to be loved, to be appreciated. And so does everybody else. If you want to know a little secret, God's little secret is this. One of the best things we can do to show gratitude is to affirm people. Affirm people, appreciate people, and show gratitude to people. We FaceTime with Lauren and them all the time. And like, like most little uh, brothers, there's always little things going on with them. They're having to try to figure out how to fix and how to have this conversation. They're trying to discipline without always sparing. They're trying to spare the rod on occasion and try to have, have this work. And so how was it, Lynn? Lauren, here's Toby start to cry. And she, before she could, I, I'm going to mess this up a little bit, before she could even get to what's going on, she hears the crying. She asked, why is Toby crying? Miles' answer was, I didn't hit him. <laughs> and Lauren's response on Facebook was, seemed legit to her. <laughs> uh, kind of reminds you of, of God talking to Adam in, in, in the garden. And he asked a question and Adam just had, he just already, already too far down the road with an answer that kind of gave away the problem that was before him there. Uh, so last night we were back and forth and they, they, whatever had happened away from that even was they had a conversation at the supper table about esteeming others. And so valuing others, your brother more than yourself. Think about what he would want. Think about what he would want back and forth to both of them. These are tough concepts for a three-year-old and a one-year-old, but I appreciate the parents getting in the game early to go forward. But you know what? They're not. They're not tough conflict. They're not tough things for us to grasp. What they may be is tough to do. And that's where we just want to get before God and just say, hey, I want to do it. I want to esteem them valuable to me. Show gratitude. 
I appreciate you sending the emails. And so I've tried to send emails thanking people for things that they do here and this week. I always gets more personal in my, my mind. And I'm going to share a little bit about this in the message because we don't want this to just to be a Thanksgiving message at all. We want to practice it. Fifth, fifth and last one is this. Gratitude is a witness to unbelievers. That's why I call this message, being, gratitude is good. Being thankful is good. There are way too many down and out Christians so-called Christians, I think I would say. Too many, woe is me. No joy, no smile. No good news ever. It looks like they just licked a lemon. We don't need this. We've got the best of best news to share. I love David Duncan. I love, he posts, I don't know, but David, he's posting stuff all the time here in middle of Georgia. Just love him in many ways, love and respect him. He shared this one that I've not seen in a few years this past week or the week before. He shared one that kind of fits, fits here. Some bunch, excuse me, someone somewhere is happy with a whole lot less than you have. I'm going to tell you, that's, that can be convicting. Someone somewhere is happy with a whole lot less than we have. It's easy to look at our life and think about what we don't have and forget what we do have. And I want to tell you, all in the midst of a crooked and very depraved generation that is cynical and critical, what they desperately need to see is that God's people are thankful and are encouraging and have an amazing ability to show this and to try to want to see it in others. Christians should be known. One person said this. Christians should be known for radical love, radical kindness, radical joy, radical and radical gratitude. And then he goes on. There's a word for that. He said it's being Christ-like. The ability to say thank you, Lord, is among one of the most wonderful things about being a follower of Christ. It is true. We can enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. And that's a good way for us to go. He is the good God from whom all blessings flow. And when a world so desperately needs to see it, what a tragedy for us not to exhibit it. Let me share six. And these are six fast things. You know, put it put this practical. Here's what I want to encourage you to do this week. Make a list of things you're thankful for. If you're like me, I make lists on my phone. So I kind of do this on my phone. Make a list of them. Before you fall asleep, maybe for the rest of this week, try to think of three things. The second one, three things. Make a list of things, but before you, you make your way to bed or whatever your routine is that you're heading to the bed, or if you're like me, before you, the lights go out in the recliner, think about some things you're thankful for. Try to, try to at least list three from that day. Keep a journal. Keep a journal. If you haven't ever started one, start one. It's great to be able to look back and see how God came through and you show thanks. And I want to encourage, I think most of you do this. Give thanks at meals. How many of y'all always do this? I take, no, that's not fair. Not fair. Not fair. Do this. Do this. For most of us, that's three times a day. For, for you're like me, uh, it's eight or nine counting all the snacks during the day. Thank God. And not just in the same glib way. You know what's been needed at our house? Miles and Toby, when they were there, and now Cohen and Walker taking turns saying the blessing on Sunday dinner. Man, to hear these little prayers. The things they've been practicing at home at night and the people they're praying for that they call out afresh and again. Slow, with a pause in between. It's been convicting to me how quickly I say my blessings when I'm out and around. It's just me. Three times a day, I want to encourage you to make, make that moment more meaningful. Four. That was four. Give thanks at the meals, excuse me. 
Fifth, whenever you encounter a disappointment or disaster, we all have them. I've had one recently, just, just a disappointment. I wouldn't make it any bigger than that. When you're going through one, just reflect back again how good God's been to you. Six, make it your intent to express gratitude to each other. Do it. It is life-changing. The fellowship and all that it builds is worth the extra effort. Amen? Happy Thanksgiving, church. I hope you have a safe rest of the of the, uh, of the day-to-day and your week starts off good. If you can, pause a moment and stay here with us. Help us get some decorations down to decorate today. That would be great. If you could come back at 1.30, that would be uh, even greater. And uh, if we'll head upstairs, Debbie, I think just slipped up to head up there and kind of point us to what needs to come down. I'm going to ask you to stand if you would.